And, um, and then I had to subconsciously think about that. Like, why am I covering up my body? You know, why am I, um, why am I not in my mini skirts as much as I used to be, you know? Why? Mm -hmm. And so I really had to, to dig deep within myself and, and think about that. But, um, yeah, my journey has been sort of an, an up and down journey, but I am happy, happy now with my body. And it is, it took some, it took some time. It took some time to have that radical self acceptance and that radical love to really, to, 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 um, embrace, embrace all of my curves, embrace my fat, embrace my belly, embrace the things that I thought were not sexy. You know, you know, one of the, oh, I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah. So at one of my retreats, I do these live demos and one day you'll, you'll just get to see one, you know, mm -hmm. they're just larger than life. Pamela butt naked on a massage table, having an experience with a sexological body worker. And I do this thing that I've named table dancing, <laughs> which is I move yeah. in my erotic experience. And I teach women literally to get off their butts for their pleasure. Yeah. And sometimes I lay on my butt. It's like wherever I want to be. But I move around and um, I get lost in trans states. And one of my clients said to me, you know, Pamela, I was with you. I was with you. I was <laughs> in my, I was everywhere. And then you got on your hands and knees and you lost me. And I said, really? Like, what was that about for you? Yeah. And she said, well, when you got on your hands and knees, you know, then your belly like dropped and your boobs dropped and my body is like your body and I could never let anyone see me like that wow. on my hands and knees, you know, with, with your belly soft and your breast soft. Cause you mm -hmm. know, when we, when we hang like that, you know, things hang, right? <laughs> yeah. When you're doing Everything the force, hangs, yeah. all fours, you know, things start <laughs> to move, right? Yeah. So I said to her, so, I had a group of the women with me and I said, come here, I want you to come around my body if you want. And I want you to put your hands on my belly. And I want you to like really like here, I want you to really like squeeze my belly and see what that feels like yeah. to hold flesh in your hand. And she did. And she went, oh, oh, that feels really good. <laughs> oh, that feels like really sexy. And I was like, great. Now what I want is for you to go ahead. It's okay. Just grab my tushy. I had clothes on, by the way. But yeah. grab my tush <laughs> and squeeze it and see how that feels in mm -hmm. your hands. Does that feel good or not? And so she was grabbing my butt and she was like, oh, this is really good. And then all the <laughs> women lined up. All my women lined up to grab Pamela's belly and her butt to, to feel what that felt like mm -hmm. and she said you know what I've been depriving my lover mm. of the pleasure of my body mm. because I was so frightened of the lens mm. and then she went into session and she said I got on all fours, Pamela, and I opened up all this pleasure for myself. Mm. And, you know, what's true is that our bodies and our stories about, the I call it the lens, mm -hmm. has absolutely nothing to do with our capacity for pleasure. Mm. Now, I'm not able to see Marla. I don't know why, but I'm not able to see the... Um, us, oh, coming up on Facebook. Are you able to see us? Um, let me look. On the phone. I'm not yeah. able. You I'm are. On the phone. I was I shared it um on the uh on my Facebook. So yeah, we're 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 live. Everything's okay. good. Lisa terrific. Michelle says hi. Hi Lisa Michelle. Okay, terrific. <laughs> terrific. I don't know why I'm not seeing it. So if you could track the comments, if the people are writing to us, if people want to write and ask our questions or give comments, we'd love that. Okay. So I think what's, what's so important 
when we talk about coming back to our bodies, when we talk about like taking back our bodies, our pleasure, is how we release, honestly, the fear of our own image. Yes. Yeah. What do you What do you think about that? I I, I think you're I, you're exactly right because we always like not we always but like some people have fear around like what do I look like what is it you know I just I, I don't like this part of my body or I don't like that part of my body and and you know I, I think I look gross or disgusting or they're comparing themselves right with um with other people or other messages or you know I, I mean when we think about consumerism as a whole you know there's always products that are wanting you to buy this buy that shape you this way do this do that um in order for you to feel some type of way about your curves or your body and even shopping for clothes you know the the models are either like super thin or like super curvy like uh uh you know small waist big hips big boobs and it's sort of like this uh, dream that people aspire to and there's nothing wrong with that I think there is something that should be in place so with your you know with the radical love and self-acceptance that you have for your body to just be like hey when I'm having sex and I'm on top and my belly is hanging over guess what I'm gonna enjoy myself and I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I'm happy because guess what if I'm happy I know that my partner is happy right? Or whoever, or my lover, whoever I'm having sex with is going to be happy um, because I'm experiencing pleasure and I'm being vulnerable and they have this access to my body. And so I think that's one of the most important things is just letting go of that fear, you know, letting go of that shame, letting go of, you know, all the things that keep us from being authentic. And do you know what, you know what's true, Marla? What? It's the lover that we're with has chosen our body. Mm, right. <laughs> like, I exactly. think we have to like remind ourselves that right. the person that we're with thinks we're hot. That's why we're there is right. because there was a mutual attraction, hopefully. Exactly. And that there and what I've learned in working with women for a decade now is that it doesn't matter what your body is. This isn't just, this isn't about fat chicks, folks. If you're watching this, this isn't about fat chicks. This is about all of us. This is even about men, even the dudes, okay, mm -hmm. and non binary people. Mm -hmm. We all have something going on mm -hmm. about body image. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that. I, I always say if you, I have found yourself a sex educator who says they completely accept their body all the time that you should just run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just run. Cause they're liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay. Cause that's just bullshit. And you can like type and say, no, oh, well, well, I'm, I'm that one. And then I'll go like, okay, you're the one. But I have seen women of every race, size, shape, and when I look, I see such beauty in all the bodies, some super thin, big, small, big butts, no butts, all kinds of things, scars, no scars, breasts, no breasts, breasts taken away, you know, post-surgical bodies. And they all have a gorgeousness to them. That's right. They all have a beauty. And what I've noticed is the women who... Um, I keep doing this motion with my hands. So <laughs> the, what, it, what that motion is about is from our genital heater up. Mm. That if we can move the arousal and feel in our bodies the engine of our own lower heater, our own genitals, our own arousal, we get really sexy. Yes. And we get so fucking sexy. And there's mm. nothing sexier that a human who is loving being sexy. Yeah. And I don't care what your story is about you. If you can tap in to that place in your body that is turned on, remember that the person you're with thinks you're hot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
And um, Lisa Michelle was typing here, uh, Lisa said, it's hard to get out of my own head. I have to work on that. And I think a lot of us get in our heads, you know, a lot of people get in our head, get in their heads because they're thinking about all sorts of things, right? And I think what's important, especially doing this work, you know, at Back to the Body, thinking about how we, you know, do erotic um, breath work, how we do, you know, all of these different things with our bodies to help us get out of our heads and into our bodies so that we can fully really experience all of that pleasure. And, you know, Lisa also said she's deprived or Lisa uh, has deprived themselves of sex, pleasure, touch, thinking, and needing to wait, uh, need to wait to lose weight, right? So like not having sex because I haven't lost the weight and not having sex because, uh, you know, in their head. So it's just really, we got we to gotta step away from that. It's an yeah, obstacle. It's so, you know, it's, it's, it's really just an obstacle. So here, I'm going to give a little trick, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I get in my head, because it happens, oh, yeah. okay? Um, Miss, Miss Body Acceptance over here gets in her head. So I could be having a really hard time. Something could be, something, something sets me off, and I start thinking about something's wrong with my body or how am I looking in this moment. What I do is I move my body. I literally move. Mm. So if I am, oh, I don't know. If, if I am on all fours and I get caught up in some story, I will switch myself up. Mm. I will move to another thing. Yeah. And by moving myself into another position, it just changes the action for me. Yeah. And then I start to feel better. Um, you know, I just sort of get back into my body again. I, I, I just do something different. Mm -hmm. And if you're using your body size, and I'm just saying the word body size, mm -hmm. because again, that's the whole spectrum of self-hatred. There are right. women and men who are super thin who have body hatred. Mm -hmm. um, that if you're using that, as a way not to engage with your body, look deeper. Because I think it's a convenient obstacle. Mm. It's a really a convenient obstacle for why you're really not dating, or why you're really not willing to be naked, or why you're really not engaging erotically. Is it really about your perception of your body? or your lack of self-acceptance, or the fact that your body can't feel pleasure at whatever size or whatever shape you're in, or is it something that you can conveniently hide behind to not actually face deeper things? Mm. What do you think about that? Is that like too radical? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, sometimes I think, I was just, uh, when you were talking, I was just really reflecting on sort of my own, my own journey with my body, you know, and, and thinking about like all of the, all of the, all of the ways that my body has experienced pleasure in whatever size. Mm -hmm. and, and I think part of that too is like, for me, when I, <laughs> I think I grew up so long, you know, being thin and being smaller that like, I almost have this body, um, it, like, I don't even want to call it like, it, it's sort of trails between like dysphoria and euphoria, right? <laughs> you I know, love it. It, uh -huh. it really does because it's like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, this body is amazing. But then it's like, I put on a, I put on a piece of clothing and I'm like, oh wait, this piece of clothing doesn't fit anymore. You know, I'm like, oh, what happened? Like, I'm like, still experiencing the same pleasure, but my body is changing and I'm not even recognizing the change. So it's like how I'm experiencing my body is totally like, um, it's sort of in this this wave of of in between, like I said, I think a little dysphoria and euphoria. You know what I think? I'm going to reflect yeah. back to you. Yeah. What what I think is going on is that you're simply embodied. Mm. 
Okay, so you're in your body, Marla. So you're mm -hmm. in your body. And so the lens is not like the, the size 12 or the 14 or the 10 or the 8, whatever that is, is not your definition of your sexuality. Mm, your right. sexuality is something that is actually at this point, literally in your body, and you feel hot. Yeah. And it's not um, about your size. Right. And I think that if we, something I've learned to do is I literally dress for my own hotness. Mm. I dress for my own hotness. So tell me more. What does that mean? What that means is that I look for designers mm -hmm. that design for size 10 and up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's my, my gig. Size is 10 and up. And I look for um, designers that design for women who are curvy and, and feel themselves mm -hmm. as hot and sexy. Yes. And there are lots of designers out there right now who are designing for, for curvy chicks. Mm -hmm. And if you're a thinner bodied woman, you can do the same thing is dress for your hotness. And so I allow my, all my curves and bumps to be seen. Mm. And when I walk in a room, I walk in like I'm the hottest thing there. Yes. Because inside my body, I'm the hottest thing walking. That's right. And if you can like learn to um, literally embody your sexiness, then it radiates out and I dress for it. My mother yeah. said, do you ever dress not to be seen? <laughs> and my husband said, why would she bother? Oh, okay, yeah. You know, why would she bother? So I like being seen. I like being in my sexiness. And that can be a size 10 and that could be a size 16. That's right. That's right. Exactly Doesn't right. Yeah. Exactly and, and right. So, so, you know, for you watching out there, um, it does take a bit of courage. Yes. You got to step through it. You got to step through the fear. You got to step through the, uh, the, the, the doubts, the, the, the thoughts in your head. You have to like, like muscle up that, that courage and, and move. And be, willing, and be willing to be seen. Mm hmm. I always I, tell people too to like embody their alter ego. Yeah. Like, who is their sexy alter ego? Like who? Because I remember back when I was younger and I was just all over the place and having so much fun with whomever. And I really embodied this alter ego who I named fantasy. Ooh, of course she you was did. Every person's mm -hmm. fantasy. Of course right? you did. Uh huh. <laughs> And so like whenever I'm thinking or I'm not feeling confident about my body or I'm feeling some type of way, I say, you know, what would fantasy do? What would, how would fantasy like be in this moment? Like would fantasy just be like, forget it. I am going to like, I'm going to dress up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this on and I'm going to feel sexy and I'm going to keep moving and really exert that powerful sexual energy, I think. And that's, I think that's one of the most important pieces is just sort of like, you just have to embody that alter ego. Think about who you need to put on in order to move forward and step through that fear and get that courage to really be sexy and powerful, and confident and, and loving with your own body. I love that tip. And I'm going to offer another one. We're giving yeah. lots of tips. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you and I, Marla, just didn't come out of the womb like this. Right. No, we got support. Right. We got support. You know, I, you, you, you know, I had a team and, you know, what we're doing together right now is supporting women in a team mm -hmm. to get the skills, to get the skills, to be supported by other women in stepping out to practice embodiment mm -hmm. in a safe container. And, what we've, we've created is this program called Every Day. And that's a virtual private program for women where they work with somebody like you. Mm -hmm. Get to work with Marla. 
Um, <laughs> and one of our male sexological body workers or female sexological body worker. And there's a private group. And we do all this private um, work, even vulva mapping, even body stories, all the things privately, virtually, so that women can begin to self-accept where they have the support of a tribe, they have the support of a team. I think it's really hard to do this all by yourself. And so while we're giving these great, you know, get your fantasy character, put on your clothing, you know, you know, get in, into your own um, body and your own sexuality, there's a knowing that sometimes easier said than done and that it is possible Mm -hmm. we've done it mm -hmm. we're doing it i mean i feel like i do it every day marla oh yeah I like it, I, me? oh yeah every day <laughs> every day i'm doing it and to, to practice, practice. Well, i love that we said that together <laughs> <laughs> but it's a practice and to have a group of women and professionals you know during this covid19 you know you don't have to stop this is a great time to really dig in and work one-on-one -on -one and work in a group. And if you're interested in the everyday program, we'll post that um, in our comments and you can get a consult. We'll be closing the doors on the program. We do it in three month, three month groups. So we're starting our second group and we'll be closing that I think on August 25th. So people can go and they can um, get a consult with Christy um, or Caitlin and see how that could work for them. So I'm gonna put that plug in right in the middle here um, so that people know that if they feel overwhelmed by this and they go, well, sure, Marla can do it or sure, Pamela can do it, that we understand mm -hmm. <sighs> that yeah. it's a practice. Mm -hmm. That's right. It is. And like, I really, I really enjoy um, coaching uh, for the back to the body because it really, uh, you know, the women are very, they're ready. They're you so know? ready. <laughs> They're, they're like ready. They're ready peaches. to make moves. They're, uh -huh. they're ready to make moves. They're ready to be sexy. They're ready mm -hmm. to like embrace their their power. Mm -hmm. And so I really, you know, encourage people if they're thinking about the everyday coaching program, like to get in it because if, if you're ready, or even if you might feel a little timid about it, like right. we are going to like embrace you, hold right. you, get your back, and like. And, and set you on your way to, to so be three month it's a three month immersion you know yeah. what I love to say if you think it's not for you it's for you <laughs> um, <laughs> so for you you know I, and I think that you know this idea of loving yourself is, is actually kind of a difficult idea oh, I yeah. mean you know when people say well you just have to love yourself and I'm like oh okay sure you know how about like we learn to be compassionate mm -hmm. to ourselves. Yeah. Like, can we start with being compassionate? Can we start yeah. with having empathy for nice. our own fears? Yeah. You know, like how can we show up in kindness? Yeah. For our own bodies. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. It's it's like about uh, like just having grace for yourself, like mm -hmm. just knowing that it's not necessarily going to be like. Uh, easy fix you know it's gonna take time and um but it's beautiful when it happens because it's just like sometimes it's just like a light bulb you know um and it's a switch and like oh wait and then sometimes it's like light bulb where's the light where's the light right, <laughs> right. I, and then, I, go ahead go ahead and just to keep pushing yourself because it'll it'll come eventually um, but like we said before, it's just, it's practice. It's really about practice. And practicing honest, honestly, you know, um, every day. Mm -hmm. um, I practice every day and I practice when I get dressed in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I don't schlump around. I'm not a schlumper. <laughs> you know? I, I could tell you're not a schlumper. <laughs> I'm not a schlumper. I, I find that not, so I'm, right now I'm wearing something that's not form fitting. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's it's yeah. if if you were to see me full on, you'd be able to see through this dress. <laughs> um, so and you see like sequins on it, and there's like, all kinds of things. Yeah. Yes, um, 
I, no matter what size I am, so again, I'm, I'm talking to all the bodies, all the bodies here, okay? Um, I always show my shape. Mm. I always, like, I'm always like, this is my shape. Mm -hmm. This is my body. I, I want my body to be seen, even when I'm feeling um, self-conscious about my body, I want my body to be honored mm -hmm. and to be seen. And so I tend to wear things that are fitted. And if they're not fitted, um, like this outfit I'm in right now, which really you can't tell, it's translucent. So my mm -hmm. husband walked in, he went, oh, <laughs> and I said, can I walk? to moms in this and he was like no. no i said but i wear this at retreat all the time and he said and what kind of retreats do you run that one? <laughs> you know what, what what kind of programming you know right and i'm like well they're body positive and he was like mm-hmm and you know what i can tell women out there is like when you like embrace it when you can embrace yourself I know like not everyone digs this shit, okay? So if I'm saying something that you think is politically yuck, 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 okay, I get it, I'm sorry. And for me, when I get dressed up in like a leopard jumpsuit or something and I'm walking down the street yes, to my well, mom's house to make sure suit. she has her lunch in yes. the jumpsuit <laughs> and the guys who are working on her building that are like three years old, and very cute in their denims, um, walk over to me and say, um, Madam, I hope you don't mind, but I really like your style. Nice. And they're like, you know, 30 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. I kind of did that. <laughs> you know? That's a nice compliment, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting that, and I'm 50, and I'm not, I don't fit into a box. Mm-hmm. And these hot young men are admiring me. Mm -hmm. And if they can admire me, they can admire everyone out there. Mm -hmm. It's really just a matter of embodiment, erotic self-confidence. I mean, that's something that you talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you use those exact words. But could you talk a little bit about erotic self-confidence or body confidence? Do you feel like you can do that? Yeah, yeah. I, when thinking about like erotic or body self-confidence, it really, you know, it, it's really tapping into to um, your your other qualities as well as qualities that you want to have. So I think when we're building upon our confidence, it's a matter of uh, knowing what are the things that are going to drive us forward. What are the things that we can achieve in order because a, a lot of us we are um, we're, we're motivated by change. We're motivated by changes in our body. We're motivated by changes in our minds. And so, really thinking about how we can retrain, reframe, unlearn um, all those past things, and just reframe um, our whole uh, <sighs> our, our whole um, how we've thought before. You know, just reframe everything into a um it's so hard to to like well it's kind of hard to explain this without being like step one do this <laughs> I'm, gonna but, tell, I'm gonna tell you about a reframe let's tell yeah. you about a reframe so yeah. i think mothers and daughters have things about weight mm -hmm. and an appearance together and uh, my mm -hmm. relationship with my mother is no different mm -hmm. and i used to call her like the food police Mm. And like she always was mon always monitored how I looked and what I ate and all that. And she wasn't being evil. She was doing what her mom taught her and all that. And so she mm. was always very um, fat conscious mm -hmm. and fat conscious about me. And she came to my retreat um, a year and a half ago in Maui. And everyone was like, wow, you're going to do the, the demo in front of your mother? And, and uh, like, how do you feel about that? And I think there were more eyes on my mother than on my <laughs> naked, orgasmic body. And afterwards, and people said to me, are you nervous? Are you nervous? Are you nervous? And I was like, I wasn't nervous about having my mother see me in orgasm hmm. or arousal. I was nervous about my mother seeing my naked body hmm. and the judgment 
that mm. she might feel about my roles mm. and about my belly, you know, and that really made me nervous that I would have, feel shame for my mother. Mm. Oh, it's really even hard to say it. Mm. Ha! Huh. So I did it. And afterwards, she said two things to me. Here's the reframe. This is the 92-year-old the woman. She was 92. She said to me, number one, she goes, you never have to go to the gym because you get so much exercise on that table. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know your body could move that way. I'm doing a bit of a Jewish older woman accent, okay? Right. And the second thing she said to me was, I didn't know fat could be so beautiful. Wow. Wow. Right. I didn't know that fat could be so beautiful. Mm. And so what she was seeing was a huge reframe for her. Yes. And a healing for me. Yes. You know, and that's a very vulnerable story to share world. Yeah. Uh, in case you that's don't beautiful. know that that's a vulnerable story to share. Um, but it was really healing for me that my mother could see me in my full embodied erotic self. And instead of judging me, saw me as beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's a reframe. Yes. That's a gorgeous reframe. And if we can do that for our daughters, yes. if we can do that for our sisters mm -hmm. or our friends and help each other see each other in our own unique beauty. Yes. That's the reframe. Oh, yes. That we could be offering each other to take back our bodies. Mm -hmm. That encouragement is everything. That What you just said, like seeing the unique beauty in each person is absolutely necessary. Um, and I, I just think that's how, that's how, we build better relationships. That's how we build our sexual confidence. That is really um, super, super important. I'm glad you really meant, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think that's incredibly valuable. Yeah. Well, I make it a point to give three women a day a compliment. <laughs> yes. About something. Yes. About something, you know, wow, what a great hat. You're rocking those earrings, Marla. Mm -hmm. You know, um, something about, you know, wow, you, you look so bright and happy today. Yes. And I also encourage people that when your people post photos of themselves on Facebook, and, you know, I post on Instagram sometimes very revealing photographs of my <laughs> body. Um, just to, to say something more than, wow, you're hot. Yeah. Like, can you see something else? Right. What else is emanating from the picture? Right. Yeah. Can you offer that compliment? Mm -hmm. I just go, go take a second. If you're going to, if you're going to comment, be more than you're beautiful, more than you're hot. Say something different. Like I can see the vi your vibrancy mm -hmm. or your aliveness. Or I love yeah. how you're moving in that photo. We tend to immediately focus on how people are conforming. Yes. In photographs. And then mm -hmm. we reinforce that. Yeah. As opposed to, wow, you know, you know, your uniqueness is extraordinary and really um, moves me. Mm hmm. And, you know, it's hard for me just to pull it out of my tail at the moment, but you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that that's helpful too. If we as women support women in their unique beauty, mm -hmm. as opposed to always going to the, you know, fire, hot, black, black. Right, right, right. You right, know, right. which after a while, by the way, when you get a lot of that, you don't even hear it anymore. Yeah, the dopamine starts to plummet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. You gotta, um, you gotta kind of come with, come up with something different, unique, like you said, in order for it to be actually be activated. Yes, and when you do that, 
you're teaching other people mm -hmm. on how to give a compliment or how to see someone um, out of the magazine lens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're all fighting against is some person out there and what they think is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a lesson in this talk, I think, is that beauty is really something that is embodied. Mm -hmm. And you give a word. Beauty is? Divine. Mm, experiential. Mm-hmm. I'm throwing it at you, Marla. <laughs> Beauty is innate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Beauty is embodied. Mm. Beauty is love. Beauty is digging our differences. Mm. Beauty <sighs> is expansive. Yes. And I feel more beautiful after spending time with you. Aw, thank you. You're so sweet. And <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not sweet. I'm just honest. <laughs> and I want to encourage folks to check out our everyday program, get a team, join our tribe, get into your bodies. And by the end of three months, you're going to be dancing for more. And mm -hmm. you're going to keep practicing. Yes, 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 yes. We have the Back to the Body group is amazing. And like, I think, you know, I'm always like, oh, this is beautiful. Like everything that everybody does. I mean, going back to the passport to pleasure, you know, experiences are really just, you know, are, are it's just beautiful. It's the map. And so what's going to happen is we're going to get you in your bodies yes. and we're going to, we're going to, we love saying melt the lens, melt the glass between us. So it feels like we are together in the room. I, I, I wanted to, um, we're, we're working on that page for our website to make it more beautiful. And I was speaking to day job, which is our, it, the marketing company we work with. And I was like, you know, could we have like a computer screen with like hands coming through it? And they were like, you know, that sounds creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the idea is that we want to reach through the computer screen and help you get embodied and turned on and sexy and give you a tribe of hot women who are willing to do the work together. One woman said something to me, and maybe we can close with this. Um, she said to me, you know what? So many people pay the money. They put the money down, like on the gym membership. Mm -hmm. They think that if they pay the money, they're in. And really what's true is paying the money or joining the group is really just your entryway ticket. Mm. The invitation next is to actually do the work. <laughs> right. It's to actually practice. And it really is so much easier um, to practice this stuff with a team and with experts and with other like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we invite you to buy your golden ticket. But more than that, we want, we want you to come with us and do the work because living in body shame, living in platitudes of love yourself, really, really love Marla. I mm -hmm. want you to love yourself. <laughs> just, just love yourself, Marla. It's like bullshit. <laughs> it's like, you know, no, that's not going to make it better. <laughs> it's not going to make it better. And that there is, there is so many ways that, that you can be supported to stop using self-hatred as a block to your pleasure. Yeah. You have yeah. a closing sentence, Marla. Oh, I think she flutters those eyelashes at us. <laughs> the lashes. Um, no, um, I, I think everything you said is, is beautiful. And I, 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 
I, um, yeah, it's sort of, it's, it's letting go of that, letting go of that, uh, that, that toxic stuff, peel, peeling away those toxic layers to, to really, to, to be embodied, to, to get into your body, to get out of your head, to really feel, really feel pleasure. So, yeah. Yeah. And when you do that, you're not just healing you, but you're healing all the other people in your life. And you're healing future generations. Yes, because you can change your DNA. That's right. You can change your epigenetics. If you don't know what epigenetics is, go Google it. <laughs> epigenetics. You can change it, and you can bring it forth for the next generation. And I think you can change it for your friends and your sisters, children that are on this earth now. And you can even heal your body image issues with your mom. Mm, that's right. Because I did. Mm-hmm. Marla, thank you so much. Yes, thank and you. It was fun. It's always fun. Yes. And you can work you're with Marla. You're always fabulous and you're always glittery and amazing. Yeah, Are those well, earrings? Because I want those. Oh yes. my gosh. The earrings. And I'll tell everyone where they can get them. Yes, You can please. get them on Etsy. And the company is called Bird Crap. <laughs> Bird Crap. Yes, C-R-A-P. Bird Crap. And they're not really terribly expensive. These are the biggest ones. Nice. And I think they're about 70 bucks. Okay. And I have them like, I have them in all the colors. Nice. And I have them in all the sizes. And because I, I love them. Yeah, they're beautiful. You get them in all the colors. So yeah. you just keep checking out Bird Crap on Etsy. When you're ordering Marla's book online and asking for a consult to join the Everyday Program. Yeah. There, three plugs. In one, because we're embodied, <laughs> we're hot, and we want you to be too. Yeah. All right, Marla, thanks so much. Lots of love, and I'll see you soon, eh? Okay, bye. Okay, bye.